Hello, my most amazing artist. Welcome to part two of our monochromatic self-portrait lesson. Today, we're going to be exploring that idea of color, baby, color. Color is one of our elements of design. It's what makes art great. And we're going to be investigating color a little bit deeper by exploring two things. Value, which is another one of our elements and principles of art, and that big long word, monochromatic. So let's start with that. Monochromatic. What does that mean? Well, it's actually a compound word where you take two words and put them together. The first part of this word is mono. Mono means one. Chromatic is the second half, and chromatic means color. So when you break it apart, monochromatic really means one color. That's right, you'll be creating a self-portrait using only one color. Now that can seem a little bit boring. One color? How am I supposed to do anything cool with one color? Well, that's where value comes in. Value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So for example, behind me, we have a couple of paintbrushes here. And we can see the different values in a single color. For example, we have red on the end here. Red has many different values. So we'll talk a little bit about tints and shades as well. A tint is when white is added to a color to make it lighter. And a shade is when black is added to a color to make it darker. And that's how you get those different values of color, those lights and dark colors. So when you look at the red, it starts out pretty dark. It adds, it adds more white to it. It gets lighter and lighter until we get to a pink color. So pink is actually a value of red. It's like the lightest color of red. So that's our main focus for when we are coloring in our self-portraits today. We are thinking about color and we're focusing on monochromatic using only one color. And then we are focusing on value to get different lightnesses and darkness of that one color so we can achieve different depths in our picture. So it's not just straight one color red, there'll be light reds and dark reds and purpley reds and pinkish reds, all mixed into one. Now, of course, you don't have to use red. You could use whatever color you want for your monochromatic self-portrait, but you have to make sure you're picking out only one color. I don't want to see a monochromatic self-portrait that has blue and orange on it. That means you're using two colors, not one. So think about what you want your one color to be, and then you need to gather up some different supplies in that color. For example, markers, crayons, and colored pencils for this. So try and see if you can find all three of those supplies in one color. Gather those up, get your self-portrait, and let's talk about how we can use those supplies to create those different values in your portrait. All right, my most amazing artist. So we talked about monochromatic one color and values, the lights and darks of a one color. So I challenge you to go find some color pencils, markers, and crayons in the one color you chose. Obviously, I chose orange. So I picked out some colors like red orange, just orange, peachy, that's kind of an orangey shade. Um, we've got regular kind of darker orange marker, a lighter orange marker, and I've got an orange color pencil and a red orange color pencil. So let's see if we can achieve those different values using all of these different um, light and dark oranges. So the first rule of our self-portrait is that we are only going to color our skin with colored pencil. Say it with me. I promise to only color my skin with colored pencil. That's really important because it's easy to get different values with just using a colored pencil. If we go in and color our skin in with marker, it's gonna to be too dark. We're not gonna be able to see those different details because they'll get lost in, our, um, in the darkness of a marker or a crayon. So on your skin, your ears, your face, and your neck, you are only using colored pencil. I cannot stress that enough. 
You can use marker and crayon on any other part of your self-portrait, your background, your hair, your eyebrows, the insides of your eyes, and your shirt, but not on your face. So that being said, let's start with colored pencil. I'm going to start out with an orange colored pencil, and I'm going to use light pressure and color in my skin. So what I mean by light pressure is that I'm not pressing very hard with my colored pencil. I'm pressing really lightly, and I'm going to color in my skin with my colored pencil. That way all of my nice details I spent so much time drawing and outlining will definitely show up because I am lightly coloring with colored pencil. Please do not press as hard as you can because then we'll still lose those details. In a minute I'm going to show you how you can get different values with your colored pencil without even having to switch pencils. Okay, so my skin is colored in. I got my ears, I got my face, and my neck with colored pencil. I still have the same color pencil. I haven't switched to this darker one yet because I want to show you how you can get different values using different pressures. My first pressure is I didn't press very hard. I did it very lightly to get a light value. I can experiment with different values by pressing a little bit harder. So now I'm going to press hard with my orange, and you can see that I'm getting a much darker value so I could add a shadow on my neck if I want to or under my chin. Maybe I want to add a little shadow over my eyes between my eyebrows or on the side of my nose to make my nose look like it's popping off. You can also press a little bit darker and give yourself, or press a little bit harder I mean, and give yourself some rosy cheeks. So you can go ahead and you can experiment with different pressures of your pencil and pressing a little darker in some areas to see how that will change your value on your picture. So I think that this looks pretty good. Now I'm going to move on to the next part. So I have, um, now that I've done my skin with colored pencil, you have free reign to use whatever else you want out of these supplies. So I think I'm going to go ahead and experiment. Maybe I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do my hair with some marker. And if you want, you can add some textures to your hair. So maybe I'll add some streaks. I've had some people do some really cool things with their hair. Some people have done like rainbow, like not rainbow hair, but streaky hair like this or striped hair. So I'm going to add some texture to my hair with my marker, and I think I'm going to go with crayon next. And again, you can use whatever color you want. Eh, maybe I'm going to go with this darker one. And I'm going to press kind of hard with my crayon so I can get some darker values. Feel free to really experiment with those values now that you have some time. Can you kind of see the difference there between the light and the dark of my hair? I think I could have gone a little lighter. Maybe I'll add a couple lighter streaks with this. I want some lighter colors in my hair. So I have a little bit of contrast. Okay, so now I've got that done. I am going to go in and I'm going to do a little bit with my my face here. So the only things that should be left white on your picture should be your teeth if you have teeth showing and the whites of your eyes. So I can go in and I can use marker on the insides of my eyes if I want to, but I think I'm gonna stick with colored pencil. I'm gonna go with a dark. Ooh, I look a little bit evil. Maybe I should have went with a lighter color. <laughs> oh, there we go. So I have that and I can go in and I can use marker for my eyebrows because that's not really technically my skin, it's hair. And I can do my tongue too. Now one thing we want to make sure of, and now we can do our, our shirts, is you can decorate your shirt however you want. You can use whatever materials you want. If you want to use marker, you can, colored pencil. That is up to you. I think I'm going to stick with marker for a minute. Now before I move on to doing my background, I really want you to think about contrast. 
Contrast is when something in art kind of stands out against each other. So if I have a dark hair, I want to have a light background so that I don't blend in with my background. I want the subject of my picture, which is me, to stand out from my background. So you have to think about your lights and darks. You see how my face stands out from my hair because it's much lighter than my dark hair? I kind of want to do the same thing with the background. My hair is pretty dark, so I'm going to lighten up my background. So I think I'm going to take my light color pencil I use for my skin color, and I'm going to really lightly color my background. It's going to look a little boring at first, but then I can go back and add a little more to this. Now that my background's covered, I can add some darker values to kind of punch it up a little bit and add a little more interest. For example, you could do polka dots, you could do stripes, you could make stars in the background. I'm going to do like rays coming out from around my head. Kind of like this, so it looks like I'm glowing. And I can make some of those lines a little thicker. Some could be thinner. I could even add some patterns in between those sections. Maybe I want to add some dots. Something to kind of make my background have a little bit of interest besides just being one color. Think about some patterns that you can add. And that's it. Here is my monochromatic self-portrait in orange. So guys, I hope you have a lot of fun making this. Make sure that you're picking your one color and experimenting with those different values. Don't forget, color pencil only on the face and look for those lights and darks and get some contrast so that thing, your picture will stand out from your background. Have fun!